No DQ Galaxy. We are live with the NoDQ.com recap of AEW Dynamite for Wednesday, May the 25th, 2020. Final edition of Dynamite before the 2022 Double or Nothing pay-per-view. First of three shows in Las Vegas. We had Dynamite tonight. And then Friday night, there will be a live rampage. We do not know the time because of the sports coverage. At this time, we're still not 100% sure when Dynamite will be airing. But supposedly, it will be live this Friday in Vegas. And then, of course, Sunday night, the Double or Nothing 2022 pay-per-view. If you missed it, you can check out the NoDQ.com predictions video over at YouTube.com slash Aaron Rift NoDQ. Let's go ahead and get into this week's Dynamite. AEW celebrating three years since the company first launched and the first show was in Las Vegas. We kicked off Dynamite big with a steel cage match. Wardlow versus Sean Spears with MJF as the special guest referee. MJF, referee shirt, maybe channeling Shawn Michaels with his short shorts. MJF did not uncuff Wardlow and allowed Sean Spears to attack Wardlow. MJF attacking Wardlow as well. They worked together to throw Wardlow into the steel cage. However, Wardlow was able to fight back, and then Wardlow broke the cuffs with his own strength. Wardlow went up to the top, hit a big swanton, but MJF, what a shock. Heel referee did not make the count. Crowd was chanting, ref, you suck. You had Wardlow going for a power bomb, but then MJF attacked Wardlow with a low blow. And Sean Spears hit the C4. MJF did a fast count, but Wardlow kicked out. And I'm thinking to myself, why not just count three anyways? This is what happens every time there's a heel referee. The heel referee should... If they're going to cheat, just count three, even if Wardlow kicks out. That's why I always think these heel referee matches are dumb, but just my own personal opinion. And Sean Spears went to the outside, got a steel chair, swung at Wardlow, but Wardlow ducked, and MJF got hit right in the head. Chair shot to the head on Dynamite. Crowd was chanting, you effed up. And then Wardlow hit several power bombs. Final power bomb was on the steel chair. And that was it. Another referee came down to the ring, counted the three. And then afterwards, Wardlow climbed up to the top of the cage. I forgot to mention that a bunch of security guys came down. Wardlow beat them up. And then he went to the top of the cage and celebrated his victory. Good stuff here. I did enjoy it, but it was pretty much every every heel referee match that you've ever seen. But the, the buildup has been good. My wife was watching at the beginning, and she was like, so Wardlow thinks he's Goldberg all of a sudden? With the whole Wardlow chance and him coming out there with the security guards. But I, I'm liking the storyline, and... Looking forward to this match. To me, it's one of the key matches for Double or Nothing. But yeah, pretty much what you would expect with these guys. Jim Ross brought up the the very tragic mass shooting in Texas, and JR said something has to stop. I'm with you, JR. And again, very tragic situation. My condolences to the families that that just suffered an unbearable loss. 
But let's let's get back to dynamite. We had a random guy backstage with a John Moxley T-shirt on. So Jericho and the Jazz, the Jericho Appreciation Society, uh, they came in and Jericho gave this random guy a fireball to the face. And Jericho said, that's what happens when you wear a John Moxley T-shirt. You get a fireball to the face because Jericho is a wizard. I know some people like anything Jericho does. If Jericho farts, they will pop for it. But I, I feel this is kind of a lame catchphrase. I feel like Jericho is is trying to reinvent himself again. But this line and the the G F Y line that he was using a couple of weeks ago, not connecting for me, at least at this time, maybe, maybe it'll catch on, but yeah, the whole, I'm a wizard thing. I think it's kind of dumb, quite frankly. We had CM Punk and Adam page having a little promo back and forth in the ring. Tony Schiavone as the moderator CM Punk brought up how the biggest moment of his career was in Las Vegas, and he will enter double or nothing as the challenger, but he will leave as the world champion. CM Punk was definitely getting a better reaction than Adam Page. Page said that there is nothing CM Punk can do to take the title from him. CM Punk just said it's not personal. And Paige was talking about wanting to destroy CM Punk right there on the spot. But he is going to wait. He's not going to deliver a pipe, pipe bomb to CM Punk right there because that is something CM Punk would do. And that's not the right thing to do. He said that he has pity for CM Punk. No respect for what CM Punk has done since coming to AEW and at double or nothing, he will not only be defending the AEW title, but he will be defending AEW. Punk was just like, why are you so angry? No need to be so upset about all this. And CM Punk said that, yeah, Adam Page did build AEW. However, it, it was using lumber from trees that CM Punk chopped down. And CM Punk wanted a handshake again. Page was having none of it. Punk shoved him, and then Page knocked down Punk with a punch. And that was your final buildup. Not great, in my opinion. I think the idea here is that Adam Page still isn't convinced that CM Punk is on the up and up and thinks something is up here. You know, a lot of the storylines with CM Punk over the past several months, you have guys saying that they don't exactly trust CM Punk and they don't think he's legit on the up and up. I, I guess that's the storyline and maybe this means CM Punk is turning heel. I'm I'm pretty sure if CM Punk is winning the title now. I was I was kind of on the fence about it when we did the predictions video, but now... I, I feel like CM Punk is winning and maybe he's going heel and this will all turn out to be that Adam Page was right, that CM Punk was was not authentic. We'll see. I, I, I think that's where they're going, but I'm not sure. Either way, the crowd definitely seems to be behind CM Punk at, at this time. And I, I thought Page was all right, but I mean – crowd was still booing him for the most part when it was all said and done. Uh, so it, it, it's a little, something's a little off for me with this one. Some people think it was Paige's best promo, but not really sure that's saying much. We had the JAS arrive for commentary and Judas was playing, but Jericho stopped it. So at least they're doing this now where they're cutting the music. Jericho says Las Vegas doesn't have what it takes to sing Judas. I like that. I'm, I'm fine with that. I still think he should just scrap the music and use a different Fozzie song. 
We had John Moxley and Eddie Kingston teaming up for the first time since Moxley took his hiatus. Them against Private Party. Uh, so you pretty much know this is a showcase match for Moxley and Kingston. Private Party did get a little bit of offense and Moxley even got hit with a stunner and then Mark Quinn came off the top with a shooting star press, but Moxley kicked out. Good guys made a comeback and Moxley scored the pinfall victory with the paradigm shift, pinning Mark Quinn. And then afterwards, we had a big fight breakout, JAS five on two, but then the rest of the backup arrived, Brian Danielson and Santana Ortiz, referees and official were trying to break things up. Jericho ended up going after Brian's leg. Brian, of course, got his, his leg stuck between the ramp and the ring back on Rampage. So they, they followed that up, and then Jericho fled the scene. Uh, so I guess JAS got the upper hand, but it, it was you know just a big brawl and... You did have Moxley's music playing at the end, so it wasn't really one side had a dominant performance here right before the pay-per-view. I still think it could go either way. I'm going to stick with my prediction that JAS will prevail and there will be a rematch with Blood and Guts. That's what I'm thinking. But we'll see. I, I, I could definitely see this one going either way. I believe Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta is doing a tournament in Japan. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. And that's why he's been off of TV as of late. We had a video package for the Owen Hart tournament. And Mark Henry had a little interview portion during the package and talked about how Owen Hart would be proud of the competition. Then we had... Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero challenging FTR for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. Pretty solid match here, back and forth. And you had some near falls. You had Trent and Rocky finally hitting the strong zero uh, combo, but Dax Harwood uh, was saved via his partner, Cash Wheeler. Then all of a sudden, we had... Jeff Cobb and a guy who's called the Great O'Con. I've heard this name before, and I thought, was somebody referencing Tony Khan? But uh, he's a wrestler from New Japan. They came in, and we had a very rare disqualification on Dynamite. You don't see DQs too often in AEW. And by the way, Wheeler Yuta in the Best of the Super Juniors. That's the name of the tournament. Uh, so... This was Jeff Cobb's first appearance, I believe, since early 2020, right before the pandemic started. And uh, wasn't the best showing for Great Ocon. He went for like a neck breaker and it 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 was botched. And then um, you had Cobb power bombing Dax through the timekeeper's table. And then Khan and Trent were on the apron and Khan put on the... Uh, the Iron Claw, and he was supposed to slam Trent through the table, but Trent kind of just took the bump early, so didn't look that good. Uh, not the best first showing for Great O'Conn, uh, but yeah, it looks like they're setting up some kind of match, maybe a triple threat match for the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Uh, but yeah, it, it wasn't the best first impression, in my opinion. We had the Hardys backstage cutting a promo for their match with the Young Bucks. They called Young Bucks a couple of Hardy cosplayers. And Matt said in AEW they are going to cement their legacy as the goats of tag team wrestling. Jeff said that they are in overprime now. And AEW is his clean slate. And it is going to be the Hardys' best run in AEW. Or the best run of their career. Next up, we had a triple threat match. We had Jungle Boy versus Swerve Strickland versus Ricky Starks. 
Uh, Starks quickly went to the outside. Jungle Boy and Swerve shook hands, but then Starks took a cheap shot. We had some early near falls, and Swerve was sent into the barricade, and then um, Jungle Boy took down Swerve on the outside with a Hurricane Rana, and then back in the ring, um, you had Jungle Boy going for a reverse Hurricane Rana off the top, but Swerve landed on his feet. Crowd really liked that. Chanting Swerve's house. Uh, Starks hit a Mishinoku driver, but Swerve broke up the pin. And then Jungle Boy got the snare trap on Starks, but Swerve broke that up. Uh, Swerve hit a big stop from the top. Pinned Ricky Starks. Good match here. And as they say, or as I like to say, Swerve builds up some momentum heading into the pay-per-view. You had Will Hobbs attacking him and Jungle Boy. Uh, Luchasaurus came down to the ring. Keith Lee came down to the ring. The three big men had a little face-off. Keith Lee got the upper hand and then went over the top rope with a dive to the outside on the other two. So, yes, uh, Swerve and Keith Lee with some major momentum heading into Sunday, meaning they're probably not winning the titles. I feel... I feel more confident with my prediction that the champions will retain on Sunday. Backstage, we had Dan Lambert, uh, the men of the year, cutting a promo. They referenced the TNT title being smashed. And I correct me if I'm wrong here. I do not think any footage was shown. Uh, so I'm, I, I know what happened on Rampage, but no footage was shown of this. So... If you missed Rampage, you have no idea what they're talking about. And uh, I guess there's a new custom TNT title for Scorpio Sky that will be presented this Friday on Rampage, which, again, we don't know the exact time. It's a special start time unknown. So, yeah, I, I would have shown the footage, but whatever. And apparently they're still heels. Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti are the faces. I don't know what's going on, really. I'm confused. At 9.20, right around the 9.30 mark, we had Thunder Rosa come into the stage for a promo with Tony Schiavone. And Thunder Rosa, different look, no makeup, no face paint. She was wearing a cowgirl hat. I guess this is her, her so-called real-life persona. And... She said she doesn't complain because champions do not complain. Serena Deeb is not a champion. And Sunday, uh, Deeb will be taught a lesson in respect. A little awkward moment here because Thunder Rose's music started playing and she kept going with the promo. I, I think maybe the person in production thought she had her finishing line and, and the music played, but then she kept talking. A little odd. Uh, but overall, promo was fine. I mean, one of her better promos in recent months. I, I will give her that. Although I still like the, the normal Thunder Rosa presentation, like the cowboy hat or cowgirl hat. Uh, I, I like the other look better, but that's just me. So 930, guess what we had? Britt Baker versus Tony Storm in the Owen Hart tournament. Uh, dueling chance, but mostly the crowd was behind Britt Baker. She's still a heel despite the crowd cheering her most of the time. Uh, they fought on the outside for a while. Tony was thrown into the steel steps. Uh, they got back in the ring, traded some blows. And then Jamie Hayter came down to ringside. Uh, Tony Storm... Rolled up, Britt Baker got a near fall, and then Storm went for Storm Zero, but Britt countered that, sat down into a pinning combination, and grabbed the ropes, and this finish was off. Something was mistimed. I think maybe Jamie Hayter was supposed to um, push the rope to give uh, Britt Baker the opportunity to grab it, like... Uh, there was there was a little bit of a delay here, and Britt Baker grabbed the rope, won the match. Did not look great uh, with this finish, but 
pretty much what I expected here. I know Tony Storm was a sentimental favorite, but uh, my prediction was that Ruby Soho would win her match and then Britt Baker would win her match and that would be the finals. And Friday on Rampage, it's Ruby Soho versus Chris Statlander. I fully expect Ruby Soho to win that one. Match was okay, but you know, not nothing special in my opinion. And uh, Marcus the Entertainer clarifying this, the Rampage start time depends on whether or not the NHL series is extended or not. So there you go. We had our main event of the evening, Samoa Joe versus Kyle O'Reilly. And Joe was taking it to O'Reilly in the early moments. O'Reilly finally got Joe down, started targeting the shoulder that was injured by Jay Lethal in the lead, lead pipe on last week's show. And O'Reilly put on a cross arm breaker. Joe recovered from that. They traded some strikes. O'Reilly escaped the muscle buster, went towards the arm again, but Joe was able to get to the rope. And then Joe made a, a comeback here, got a second wind, put in the rear naked sleeper hold, and O'Reilly passed out from it. I like how he was kind of foaming at the mouth. That was good. Uh, solid match here. Nice main event from these two. Um, better than the women's match. Uh, probably the best match on the show because the cage match was more of an angle really than a match, you know, the whole thing with MJF, you know, doing his thing. Uh, so solid main event here. Adam Cole appeared on the stage and had a little face off with Samoa Joe. And that was the final moment. All in all, solid dyna dynamite. Good show. Uh, I would probably give it a B, maybe a B minus. Um, as far as go home shows, not the best. So I would probably go with a B minus just because I think um, for a go home show, um, it, it was not their strongest effort in my opinion. Uh, like with when this show was over, like I'm still looking forward to the pay per view, but it there was nothing where I'm like, wow, I really got to see this pay per view on Sunday. It was good, but I, I think it was missing like a really heavy angle to get people hyped up for Sunday. Like it was, it was pretty much just your standard go home show as far as I'm concerned. So because of that, I think I'm going to go B minus instead of a B. Uh, that was dynamite. Everyone no DQ.com will have live results coverage on Sunday. So if you're not buying the pay-per-view, you could check out no DQ.com for all the latest. Uh, Gary Joe mentions LA for next week. Going to be a big show, I think, next week because they're going to be at the L.A. Forum. It's a sold-out crowd, 13,000-plus people. And according to Tony Khan, some of the Warner executives will be there. And I, I think they're going to be looking to make a really good impression with the, the executives. Next week, I expect to be a really hot show. And this wasn't the best crowd either, like, they're in Las Vegas, but you have to keep in mind that the double or nothing crowd is going to be more of the of the fans flying in from other areas. Uh, this was more of a local crowd and wasn't one of the, the better dynamite crowds. Like as far as crowd noise and attendance wise, it, it was not one of their, their stronger crowds, but overall it was fine. Not necessarily worth going out of your way to watch. You know, maybe a somewhat recommend, but you could probably skip it and not miss too much. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for tonight. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest news and rumors. And tune in for the NoDQ review coming up. Remember, everybody, say yes to NoDQ.com. Please spread the word. Tell a friend. Anything you can do to help out would be very much appreciated as far as just telling people and having them check out the live streams. It's much appreciated, everyone. Take care, and I will see you all next time.